Come il nome è Severino Meregalli, sono un lavoratore di Università e sono il fondatore del DevoLab, che è un ricerca center focusato sull'impatto delle tecnologie digitali sulle compagnie. Quando ho bisogno di parlare in conferenze che sono in late, i keep saying don't trust, don't, don't count on me or to be back on track because generally I'm one of those that is really losing more time. But this time I have a plane, so the good news for you is that I'm not going to exploit the fact that I'm talking a lot because of the plane. And uh, the other thing, I'm, I'm happy that there are pictures and, and photos because my friends will never believe that I've been invited to have a speech in a conference with a lot of people that are real, real experts in, in data analysis because Uh, this is something that, uh, so a good to be a proof of that. Uh, let me give you an overview of what I'm going to cover to give you our perspective, that is a business school perspective, and uh, what we have done to try to focus on some of the issues that are linked to data exploitation, as we like to call it. Very briefly, and obviously when I say briefly, I say you know, we'll make a, a little uh, disaster in uh, you know, PowerPoint is a mass destruction power tool. And uh, using that, trying to summarize in just a slide uh, a lot of issues and uh, aspects. The first is that we know that we are living in a complex world and not going, going to be easier. So we have to adapt to that and not keep in complaining about it. Uh, but the good thing is that uh, in these fuzzy business scenarios uh, and the complexity, we have a way to create profit. If you think that the, the best way to create value is to cope with complexity. There's no, I don't know many companies that are doing, making business with good morning money, doing something that is simple. So the silver lining is that coping with complexity is a way to create value, is the best way to create value. Uh, another thing that is very relevant for the data uh, approach and in using data is the fact that if management has ever been a science we, we know now that my management is not a science. You know, we, we, we pull the legs of our students with the, the, the MBA, say after you paid a lot of money, they ask for more than one year, what you really learn, it depends. So what, what really <laughs> we are teaching that everything depends. And depends on the fact that you are able to really think in terms of what is going to happen to your business, and there are no golden rules, and uh, they say, There is no way to tell, this is the way to make a good business plan, this is the only way to make a profitable business. In fact, we call all the people that are innovative or disruptive because they're doing something different from what we, we learned before. Uh, another aspect that's very important is that uh, we were trusting a lot of the fact that we were trying to make a strategic plan. And most of the companies are now making a strategic plan that they change every day. So the two things are not really <coughs> going consistent. I cannot can change a strategic plan that I do and redo and rethink every day. The uh, reason for that, because the world is complex and need really to adapt. Okay? And this, you see, calls for uh, an, an issue uh, we keep seeing every day in the companies, for at least also for my part of uh, interaction with the company when I consult is that they keep saying at the end of the day there is a gap between the information we need and, and really what we have here and if this gap is evergreen is always there that means that's really a complex task because there are a lot of companies consulting professors university research centers that are trying to address it if we have not solved it, it means that that's really a difficult task and that brings To a desperate, I would define search for insight and knowledge sources, and that's why each time on fundraising and they say, "Well, I, have, I could have a solution to the problem. I could give you some more insight." That's why there is such an, an interest for it. <laughs> so why? So this moving to the the landscape of data and what we see now that uh, if you are able to generate value from data and analytics. That's one of the, has always been one of the pillars of being competitive, uh, even before we were talking about uh, uh, mining the data or, or neural networks. Uh, we need to take advantage of all the information we have because it's a scarce resource. And so it's, we cannot uh, overlook anything that could be useful to take decision. But at the same time, we have this issue that Uh, the way we process data and we memorize and we use data is not aligned with the, our capability to uh, understand 
and uh, especially to use large and complex data set. Uh, in this scenario, so we, where you put together a lot of uh, need for data and some hope, you see that this creates very easily uh, a hype effect. And uh, also a lot of people that uh, see a, a business opportunity are kind of improvised players. And uh, uh, you know, this market, you see that on the offer side, you see now everyone, a lot of companies that are to do and to work and make some money out of it. Uh, the, the good thing, as we have seen in the previous the first presentation this afternoon, on the other hand, we have a lot of nice and alternative tools, techniques, computing, and uh, so and also good players, good consulting company that can help to uh, solve the problem. But here comes the issue. Uh, when you see that from a, a company perspective, the cost benefit and the leverage you have here is very high, but also the costs are very high. Just to be, give you a, one example that I will elaborate a bit more because it was one of our case studies. When we start discussing with some company, we took Vodafone in Italy, they told us we tried to do a first, uh, they call it a sandbox, uh, we'll try to apply these techniques. And we put three millions where we're not that happy. You know, those about three million euros as a is a hell of a sandbox, okay? Uh, and not many companies in Italy can afford to make uh, this kind of, because the sand is very expensive there, okay? And uh, so not all the company can really afford to say, well, we try to do it for the million. Obviously, they measure their result in billions, so for them. But it's not the fact that if you're a smaller company, you can do the same thing with 3,000 euros. Because with 3,000 euros, you do not nothing, you don't do nothing. So here, we have to try to be as much as pragmatic as we can and really thinking also thinking and talking about money. So what's really the money behind it? Okay. So here there is a gap between uh, data explosion and kind of uh, ability to execute. And uh, if you see what the people tell about this, they always say that, for instance, there is this the sexy show, job uh, no one has. And uh, But I like this quote from, uh, there was number of years ago from the McKinsey Global Institute, that by the way is one of the good places to have some good insight. But if I look that from uh, a more pragmatic approach, you say that maybe we we have a shortage of, uh, let's say, 200,000 data scientists. I would say 1 million, why not 1 million? Who well, doesn't want a person that knows everything about uh, statistics plus data organization plus the tools plus business insight I think we miss, like we miss every uh, basket team, missing a person that is 2 and 20 meters tall, is very agile, I can do it, every. So this is something that's very theoretical, especially when then you match that with the money you can pay these people. And so if you, and it's nice because some of the companies come to us and your university say, I would like to hire a data scientist, you have to have all these characteristics, but I want to pay it very, very low salary. So maybe a scientist in data is so stupid in, in, in business because if you have all these skills, it's difficult that you are, and that same applies in many, many other fields. So I'm disagreeing in a way, obviously it's easy to say there is this missing link, like every, that's a kind of Nobel Prize winner profile rather than a normal person. And then there is also the media that put the most stress. Now, saying from the things that are kind of scary, data is the new god, uh, but that the economy is a bit more serious, saying that uh, we have the data to large, data is power, computer world made, but uh, let me just, uh, as an example, take something that is really putting everyone out of track here. Uh, by the way, the people that are trying to push this kind of investment, they love this quote, okay? But if you read it, it's uh, just common sense, doesn't really mean really you see there's really something wrong there. Well, this quote, by the way, is from Baseline that is very close linked to uh, Tech, Tech Republic and, and Garner, is telling that for a 10% increase in data accessibility, translating to 65.7, I love the 0.7, <laughs> because that means there's a lot of science behind it, okay? 68. 65.7 million in net income for a typical 1,000 fortune company. I think this sentence is a good example of bullshit. 
<laughs> and the problem is, is a lot of people take this quote and put in their, in their PowerPoint presentation to say why do we have to exploit data. And some of these CEOs say, you know what, if this works, why, why should you sell products? Because that, that's already so going to solve my P and that by itself. Okay? So I don't need to do all the rest of the job. I'm generally doing. Problem is that if we don't start thinking a bit more about this, we are going to ruin also the good part that is behind it. Because obviously, the people that believe this kind of message will, will be believe they're being betrayed. And so they discard the technology together with the idea. And that's a big issue here. That's a crowded market, so a lot of companies try to find their room. And so that's why maybe they like those sentences, because they try to make invoices. Sometimes I will say they make invoice number one. The problem is to say number two, number three, number four. So to keep invoicing. And uh, so this brings us to the, what we call the hype as usual. Nothing new here. But again, the fact is not new puts on us the problem to say what we can do to make it better. And not, not each time to say, you remember, I took, you know, this is paid research, so I'm not using the, the last one. But I, as I had to choose a, an old one, I, I chose on purpose 2014 when the IoT was at the top of the hype. Now, we are four years later, so we know what happened, and we know exactly that happened what was forecasted. That IoT was not, is not so easy to use, there were a lot of problems with security, there is cost problems, and so we know that it was not really the solution to all problems to make a lot of money. And the same applies to each and every field. So in our research center, we tried, well, we're still trying, so I'm not saying that we succeeded, but we tried to do this. We take this idea and we say, do we have each time to make go through this kind of roller coaster, go up and down? And uh, it's not a way, especially it's a more professional way to say that we try to avoid at least, at least part of the inflated, inflated expectation. You see, not all of them, because that would be being too, too good and, and so. And by the way, some hype helps. So because it gives you the idea that you are excited to work on a new area. area. But you see, even more important to avoid this problem here. The fact that after some part of the, of the illusion, the people go to the next thing. Now it's a big data, okay, it's gone. Now let's go to blockchain. We'll see if we can do blockchain. Now let's see the other one. So each time find something. So it's being constantly under a kind of drug effect of new technologies and not trying really to exploit what we have. I can tell you because when I was a bit younger, I was in the first wave of artificial intelligence. And in my school, we had a lot of money to make it. And after we, don't, we didn't get very good results, and so no more financing, say, that, that's really something that's not going to work. You know, And the problem was just to be patient. But we have not been patient because we are, again, hype driven. We are not, and that's very, very not very good as if you are a research institution. And you see that from the company perspective, the value obviously is not here unless you are very rich and you can afford to, to waste a lot of money. And so when you discover what the real use, what the Garner and other called the plateau of productivity, when the things are really working and you don't, uh, are not excited anymore. So we, what we call business as usual. So how, how can make it business as usual, or some of the issues that we have found. I'm not saying that we found all of them, but there are at least three that we think are very relevant from a business perspective. The first is that uh, we have to try to avoid this high effect. And to avoid it, we have at least three key topics. Let me describe them very quickly. Some of them, as usual, are kind of obvious, but are not being, say, uh, used enough to make some kind of difference on, uh, and be more realistic about the results. The first is the distinction between the physical and the social world. The second is the data quality, and the third is the context. Let me give you some explanation for each of them. The first and most important, at least from our perspective, is that natural sciences and social sciences are quite different. And uh, sometimes we know that uh, we have a, a better time in finding uh, some results where we are dealing with a natural phenomenon. And uh, a bit more difficult, or quite difficult, to have uh, the same result on social sciences. 
this, this is a good example. In, in uh, natural sciences, you can derive a rule from an exception. So in astronomy, you see a, a, a planet with an odd orbit doesn't think that maybe that day it was, not, was upset, okay? It's just the same, maybe something we're not being able to explain. So from one singularity, you can derive a rule. In consumer behavior, if you see something different for the first time, it's difficult to say, oh, wow, there is a new this discipline, maybe just a crazy person. And you're not going to build your strategy or something that is unique and is not going to happen again. So here, it's quite difficult to distinguish the difference between a trendsetter and a crazy person. Because you get, if you get a trendsetter, you will be the first to deliver something to the market. If you are just following a crazy person, you will lose a lot of money. And this is really difficult to explain. If you then you, you did something without and, and say, oh yes, we discovered that when it was too late. And so the fact that we are, generally speaking, a bit naive in not understanding how difficult it is to work on the social sciences uh, creates a lot of mix-up between the two. So if you list, if you see the list of successful case history, you see that two things are, are very much mixed. So let me make you one example of that, explain why we have also worked with them in a research with them. Uh, we get it across Boda from Italy. And they said, we have a very nice uh, set of successful case histories in using big data and analytics. And so we had a seminar with them, and they explained to me one of the best examples I've ever heard about how do you, transfer, you tra transform man, uh, data into money, what they call the data monetization. And to, that's a long story, but to make this long story short, they said that in London, they had a number of towers and towers and they obviously they had all the data of the people connecting, locking in and locking out from this and they had, had processed all the data into a mathematical model and they discovered that maybe there were two towers more than what they needed. You can imagine that renting a, a space in London to have a tower, cell tower is very expensive. So basically the people what they did, they said maybe these two towers could we could try to switch them off and try if everything works in the same way, with the same quality. They did it, it worked, and so they dismantled two towers. So that's a perfect example, I think, how you can use data, because the, the theoretical model they built when they were put all these cell towers in London was a bit more, say, on the same side, and so everything worked without two, and so they saved money. So that's, you can really see that you use data and you have transformed this data into money. But they say, you know what? We have some bit more difficulties in doing the same thing with clients. Well, it's a hell of discovery. What's the difference between a radio wave and a client? Are the same phenomena? Are they the same? Do you think it's so? Because obviously, when you move from the fact that you are doing something that is serious, like why? There is a bouncing on, on uh, maybe on 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 a, on the wall or something interference. That's physics. Okay. And when you try to understand why your offer is working or not, you are not dealing with the same area. And the, the difference is the exponential. It's not just a bit more effort to do it. So here the paradox is sometimes in the digital world, and I think what's coming happening this day with Cambridge Analytica, explain that is more easy to influence behavior rather than understand it. Why should I understand when they go directly to do what they, what they want? It doesn't make any sense because instead of using a kind of soft path, they say, you know what, I know how to make them do what they want. And so that obviously <laughs> cuts completely off. So instead of understanding why the client likes my product, I want them to buy them. You know, that's what happens with influencers and other people that are used as a way to make things happen, not because you have understood well, well why they, that works. And uh, the fact that if you look at on the short term, uh, because the long term this is going to change, but that's a long story, uh, the reward and the results that you have uh, is higher in social sciences and lower in natural sciences. Again, back to the Boda, for example, what they saved with those two cell towers is you don't even see it in their PNL. 
because that disappear, there are peanuts. If you make an, a good offer and you have 0.5% of the Italian market that decide to go on your side, you can really see that on your piano. So the thing is that, as usual in the economy, the things that are the harder have the most value, and the things that are easier have less value. And that makes sense, obviously. Otherwise, we will all be rich. Okay. Um, so that's why we try to, uh, to work a lot on, 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 the, on the field of social sciences. To do that, we need to, uh, to analyze data. And this is something that, again, today, at least, uh, I've not seen mentioned, but like it's something that is not existing. I know that you're working on that. It's data quality. Every technology doesn't solve the problem at the beginning. I was hearing from people saying, I have 5,000 features. Well, 5,000 features are a lot of features. 5,000 features with quality. I've never seen something like that. OK? Because you no know, problem is not to have 5,000 features. So, you know, that's already well known if you're not for the first stage in, data in this business, that big data exists for its volume, but not as quality. So let me tell you why. First, uh, this, the old uh, and evergreen garbage in garbage out works. For instance, we are, so we have sources that are out of control. We don't know how the data was collected, how we were even know how to filter. And filtering is a huge problem here. And maybe again, if you put how much money you need to do it, you see that this filtering is not worth the effort. Sorry, you know, being in business school, I have to keep thinking about the money and not just the fact that I'm very happy to do that, you know. And, uh, and this data quality with the say the urgence to use data is, n I don't see, it. people try to forget it because it sucks, okay? Because I wanted a new toy, I don't want to think about it. Again, one example, cost. I've just seen a very nice uh, example made by a research center on analyzing a lot of uh, balance sheets and cost uh, of companies in Italy. Well, the problem is that for they forget something, like saying that up to a certain year, we have some criteria to do that. And after that year, the criteria changed. So that's easy. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to get that. But they wanted to have a very long data series, so they forgot or faked the fact that this criteria changed. Let me make you another example. I think you are familiar with the fact that many companies now have year, so-called ERPs that are huge engine to produce data. But when they come to cost, some of them are measuring fiscal cost, not the real cost. And everyone that's been to a business school knows that, that cost measurement is not objective. It's just a criteria. So you need to, to put what they call the metadata saying this cost is X or Y because of this criteria. And so criteria is important as the data. We know that. We cannot just put everything in a kind of mixer, a blender, and try to see if something happens because that will not happen or we we'll just derive something that doesn't make any sense. So we have we are back to, uh, to the old usual problem, but the fact is though doesn't mean that we have to overlook it. So we need a single source of truth, if there is. We need uh, accountability. If people are not accountable to produce data, they will not use a lot of effort. And then we show you an example in a few minutes. And the, the fact that uh, there is no way to measure data, especially in social sciences, again, ma management is a social science. Uh, without having a criteria. There is no way to make them if you don't. That's why we, we keep saying it depends. It depends what you want to measure. So it's not like measuring temperature. That is already a relative issue, by the way. And the uh, oops. It's gone red, but I think it's I, I, I bumped into it. It's, I, I think it's not x rated, so we can, <laughs> we, we can go back to it. At least for people. We can do it in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it puts more, it puts more, 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 uh, <laughs> more attention. <laughs> I, actually, it was my fault because I, I bumped into it. Okay, but. And you also know that. Uh, this kind of uh, situation is uh, very linked to the fact, also for a statistical reason, that 
the more you variable, the more you have uh, false positive. And here the issue is how you can put together something that makes sense with the data you collect. So there are, before thinking about uh, having a technicality, you need people that know the domain, as easy as that. So you know people that know at least the most important thing. Because, you know, reinventing the wheel here is, is not a great achievement. And, uh, and so this is uh, something that, well, let's, let's do it this way. Uh, this is something that uh, doesn't really help if you don't really have a, a context vision, meaning a context, and a context expert. I don't know why in many projects I don't see the people interviewing or people making data analysis, so some of the data scientists think that it's really a science and you can skip, ask the people that work in the business. And, uh, and sometimes, I have a very nice case in a large fashion industry in Italy, that when they have analyzed data about their clients by one of the mo most well-known analytical company, obviously all the sales people in every shop knew that. But they spent a lot of money to discover something that you can interview in five minutes. So that's not really new knowledge. Is that, that's very nice from the statistical point of view. It's not very nice if you paid a, a, a big bill to get that <coughs> when you already have this knowledge inside because you have domain, domain ex expert. And if you have a lot of uh, variables, obviously, you know, you will have more false, false mm. truths. This is the only thing I, I, I'm sorry that is in, uh, not very readable, to me, but you know that Dilbert is. Uh, is one of the best sources for management, uh, more than reading a lot of books. And uh, that's, that's a very nice strip about uh, big data. I see you are consultant being da data mining all day. Uh, results are quite shocking according to the, uh, the data says I always have when I do this. Okay. <laughs> and, and this is a false true, but the problem is that if you spend a lot of money, that's not really that, that funny. So why? is this a, a, a critical issue because contextual data are very scarce and, and very often are not available or the data this is just in the property of your competitors and uh, so here we have really a bottleneck uh, back to Vodafone okay use that as a as a, an example in Vodafone they had uh, the problem to say we know, know a lot about our clients what we don't know and we don't have a source telling which were the offering that very moment in Italy. Okay, and you know that in all the, all the data, if you go, you see that uh, something is happening in the market, you cannot say, ah, oh, by the way, that was the day that we have the election. Well, you cannot forget about it. Okay, and that, by the way, was a, a nightmare in Italy recently. Okay, so you have to put to, together a lot of stuff that you have to express, otherwise you will never get or try something that makes sense. So that in this moment we don't have a government in Italy, that yesterday that there was a the Fed expressed another way to pay for the tax rate, and so forth, so on, and, and the weather, and so on and so forth. So you cannot, and all this data generally don't come. So the fact that a lot of companies have a lot of data about what is happening to them, or to their clients, but they know how to relate this to other sources. So, so they try to squeeze meaning from this, but that's impossible. That's impossible again in social sciences. Maybe it can, it can work in other fields. So here, again, uh, it's trying to balance. It, it doesn't make any sense you make a huge project in your company collecting data if you don't balance that with contextual data at the same time, because you, you have to be balanced. Or you, you discover that too, too, too late. And in this case, what I call the brute force approach doesn't work very well. So it's not that I keep doing, doing it more and more time. Because if that I don't get into, into the system something that makes sense, it will never get good results. Because here connecting the dots is easier again in natural sciences, is more difficult in social sciences. If you see that in economical terms, the problem here is to find the sweet spot between something that is obvious, and no one is, is obviously available to pay for something that is obvious, and something that is a false finding. And they can tell you that, at least from our perspective, this area is really, really narrow if you put together also the economic part of it. Okay. So the fact is that there are a lot of things we can do, 
but uh, the economic value is not as, as large as it is perceived, apart from the hyper effect. So if we want to work on that, we said, we have tried to transform this into a kind of idea, a bit more pragmatic idea, so make the difference, measure the quality, and consider the fact that you have or you don't have expert. So what we did basically, we tried to, first of all we said, so the maximum you can get in physical phenomena is also to arrive to say, I understood something, and this from, from now then is going to work. Okay? In, in medicine we have a, a number of great examples of this. So we thought that uh, the cause of uh, a illness was something that we discovered was not that. And so here data crunching and crunching data and, and understanding is, is something that is really worth. Because it's difficult that there is something that is completely uh, random. Instead, in, the, in social sciences, we can get some good hint, but not say, I find finally why <coughs> people are buying BMW instead of Audi, okay? Because that's, or why the, 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 the price of, of the gas is going up or down. Uh, I have a good, I have a friend that studied with me in, in Bocconi, was one of the most brightest and nice people in, 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 in my class. And he went to Amy, you know, the, the, our state oil and gas company, and this economist is only a unique task is to predict the price of the gas and of petroleum. You think that they do this right? Obviously not. I say, why don't they don't fire you? Yeah, because we have also a lot of excuses saying why well, our model don't work. And this is true, because I think it's going to be six, $600, six, six, $60 per barrel and then it was 55 Goes up instead goes down. Reason why they don't fire all these economists, that that's their, their only task, they use everything, you run back to everything, is because they say, you know, it's too complex. Because just uh, a brief note from the Saudi Arabia is going to change the market, or a person, because that's the part that, for the time being, so you can imagine if one company would have this working in, in a reasonable manner, futures would be a game, a, a game for kids. So this brings to the problem of which kind of path. And uh, generally, it's better that you check and verify you work on understanding the state of the art. So saying that if you have a low data quality and low capability to understand what happens, it doesn't make a lot of sense that you start making, cleaning your data and preparing your data set. Because you will just go in this direction. So better say, are we really using the state of the art for instance, as I'm basically an ignorant in a lot of subjects, uh, I go to my colleagues saying, what's the state of the art of understanding marketing? What's the state of the art in finance? What's the state of the art of understanding the, the, the price of oil? And then, when I have this, then it makes sense to have an improvement in data quality. So, my friend in any could tell, yes, we have a good, very good model, but the problem, we have a lot of noise coming from the market, or we have a lot of data that are not verified, and so work on that. To get some time, uh, let me, what we did basically, we tried to study a number of so-called success stories. Um, we took the Volvo Car Corporation, uh, that I tell you was mostly on uh, how to improve the safety of the car. You know, Volvo has a, a target of zero uh, accident or zero casualties, and uh, obviously they should not have sold their Volvo to the driverless companies. So now that guy just created one, but uh, we use that Southern California Edison, that were some of the cases most quoted as a good use, and that's again on uh, being predictive uh, maintenance and, and finding um, part of their network that was not working. And then uh, uh, we studied in Suez GDF on, you see, that was more on the customer side. So basically, out of the three cases I mentioned to you, you two, you were more on uh, uh, relying on uh, technical aspects and one more on the social part. So how you can make better better marketing operation and sell better products, which so improve my CRM, the billing, and the customer uh, knowledge. These are the paths. So what we learn from these uh, examples, among others, that actually there are two key issues here, data quality again, and th so they showed exactly why they were not quality, just one example, so that we stay 
more or less on track. Um, they said, we have crew going out and make repairs. Some of them are very accurate, obviously, in doing their report, and others were just saying everything is fixed. And when they, they, they were faking numbers, because they, they, their supervisor were checking what they're feeling before. So do you think this is strange? That you have thousands of people going out and not all do the, the job in the same way? Does it make sense to you? Yes, so, but you cannot say, let's assume that everyone is doing their job perfectly. And so they said, we had, we had to create a better culture and give some money and control the data. So that's really a lot of effort, just to get a report from the crew fixing a leak, okay? You can imagine all the rest. And I don't like when I see people that don't even think about it, they say, well, well they give me all your report about repairing and we'll see if there is something interesting we can derive from it. Maybe you can derive that they are not good. But you know, that's really a kind of attitude that sometimes, or because we want to play, so we don't like something that uh, is not right, we're playing as soon as possible. And then obviously have people that understand the phenomenon. Uh, so we tried to derive a list of possible layers or stacks that create uh, data value. And uh, this is work in progress, but I think so. I'm just telling you that could be improved or, or maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense. We're trying to move from uh, a generic idea of the value of data into something that we can break down into components. And uh, the first thing is, let, let me briefly, obviously, if the data model if it's a good data model, we create. If you organize them in, in a way that makes sense, obviously, we create value. There you have a stock a cross section. Again, one example. In, in the physical world, having uh, something about the planet history since we have started to make a, any kind of observation. So the stack and the history make sense. If you talk to every business leader, what they tell you, they keep telling you, the world is completely different. It's not the same that was six months ago. So why you should use data for six months ago? So this is a, a typical example of companies that the right hand and the left hand do, do, do completely different things. The leaders tell that the world has completely changed and there are data scientists studying what happened 20 years ago. So the only chance is that you are going to be the next Nobel Prize winner because you find something in the law of the economy that is not changed over time. But that's, that's Nobel, pre, Nobel Prize, you see. It's not, so I'm not sure in this list. Then there is, right to assess the data quality, the fact that you have some quantitative tool to manage and some cognitive tool to do that, to use them. And so because you know, for instance, uh, the force of gravity, or you know something about uh, consumer behavior. But if you have just, at the very beginning, the intrinsic value, the value per se, of uh, data in the physical world is always higher because there is something the more value embedded here you can discover that uh, your cognitive tools are completely wrong uh, and the data quality is, is is not good and so so on average this wins so the the conclusion is if you have data about the physical world and you don't use them that shame on you okay this changes radically when you put together the context and so the domain expertise, so in that very specific area, the fact that you have contextual data and contextual model, for instance, how competition works in the market, makes it exactly the other way around. So the potential value of social data is much higher, way much higher. So I do this here just for the labels, but that would be. And that's why this is so sexy and attractive, because the potential is very high. But you see that then you have to put together three steps. The data itself, the tools to elaborate the data, and the expertise that again has some tools inside. Okay. So these are the three main components. We tried to do this in a real world. We, uh, as I told we, we went to uh, Vodafone and uh, we did it. That's partially in Italian, but because uh, we just wanted to show you what we did basically, we tried to put this into action. So we asked them, let's give us one of your nightmares, but, but where you have a lot of data. And by the way, this is the list of uh, all the 
databases they have on, with, on this field. The field is uh, business um, clients, but that goes from the, the person that uses the telephone for business, so not the, 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 the normal clients. And uh, that all this data set, then we, we use the model I showed you before with a very simple metric, so in kind of self-assessment. Because we have, obviously, you can imagine in a company that has uh, more than six, seven billion euro turnover, they have, they have the CDO, a chief data officer, and they have experts for data in each in every field. Uh, what we did basically, we asked them to, to evaluate on that scale. You see, in the center is the theory, theoretical maximum. This is what the, was their self assessment. And this is something that we adjusted because some of them were not usable to take decision. Or we were thinking about taking decision. That's the overall putting together all the data they used. And you see that to make a long story short, out of a theoretical maximum of 70 points, they have 36. And it's not difficult, that's not difficult math. That means that out of the, the top, that's half of what would be desirable. And that's self assessment. And so we say, and then. This are uh, like assessing your, your son or your daughter, so generally you are, you are a bit more, say, positive about it. And then we did another very easy thing that they found uh, very useful, that's good, especially as it was uh, just a research. We took uh, the overall data value, the list of all the database that are these dots, and just put it, and we point out the three ones that had uh, the more value in putting an effort in trying to, to work on them. And you see here, and that's a very good example, overall data value close to zero. Which kind of data set is this? Is one of the most, you see, the more is high here, the more is important to take good decision in this business. And guess what here? That's the customer and call center interaction. Obviously, that's a gold mine if it works. So it's what your clients tell you. Why is zero? That's not me telling you, it's them, they zero. Because when they put together all the data, they discovered, again, an obvious thing. Like when you pay companies to, to manage data centers, and you start them to fill forms, and you know, using people that sometimes are desperate because they've not found a better job, what do you think they will do in this kind of forms? They put a lot of things that you never use. They say, they, they will joke and say, we would like to give all this data to our competitors, so we take the wrong decision. Of what is our data? And so they said, we, here it makes sense to make a, a project to improve them. Maybe changing the rules of the game, uh, changing the way we, we give money to the our data center, maybe making that as an in-source, so in-sourcing them. <laughs> because it's in the interest, you say that the data is strategic and then to give to people you don't control how they produce them. Again, that doesn't make a lot of sense because they get a report from call centers that are all outsourced in some fancy place in the world and where the people don't really worry about the fact that that data will be used there to make a lot of data analysis. The same apply because they have a big problem with the channel and distribution network that's on master data, uh, because they have trouble in finding a single source of truth here. And, uh, and the same works, so that's, you see, that's good in quality, but, but as this is the key performance indicator of this business. You cannot say that you, you are okay if it's not perfect, because it's also how you pay managers and you reward managers. So that's, that's a snapshot as a, of a real life in one of the most sophisticated and well-managed company in the world. For sure they are not. And so you can, I think you can get a good impression of what, or how it's difficult to trans transform that really in value. And, uh, and uh, so this is the state of the art. The other issues could be coming from other areas. Let me just quote a few of them that I think is important to start thinking. First one, we know now that we, due to the technologies, we have this idea, you know, there's another hype or trend set, trend, with the so-called edge organization, where we can have in the peripheral part of the organization the capability to collect, process, and take decisions. So you know, the model is that I need a lot of computing power and tools that are central, and so you have to bring every, all the data to me, and then I will, in my headquarters I will take decision. But now I can, I can do very good data processing on the edge. There is a very nice video from a famous company in this field, in 
database, I'm not telling the name because using that as a negative example, where they show a, a, a store manager that with a tablet, so the story is the typical tablet to get the people excited about how can you use data. The story is simple. And it's very nice, obviously, because this company has a lot of money to make these kind of videos. There is a store manager, and uh, is, at the end of the day, uh, he discovered there is a lot of fresh fruit that is there on, on, on the shelves. So in every theory in a retail system, what do you do when you discover that you are going, you are close to the last half an hour, or one hour before closing, and you have fresh foods that will not be fresh the day after? Discount. Discount. But the problem is that in the old world, you can see that you can do anything. Because first, you have to do the discount, and you don't have the power to do it, you don't have the analytics, you don't even know, and you don't have even the tools. But now, in this video, this retailer has the electronic, has the IoT system to, to, to change the prices, and the store manager has finally a tablet in his hand. And so with the tablet, he plays with an in-memory data analytics tool, and finally, you can see, you know, obviously, you can use a, a kind of system where he lowers the price, and then the video goes and shows you the price are immediately changed on the shelves. And then the people flocks to pay everything and we are all happy and that's the end of the story. And so you can see at the same time, analytics, IoT and th everything at work creating a lot of value. Now, let me, let me tell you my take on this. this first of all, this, all this is true, it's feasible, it's not rocket science, it's not from the future. The little detail that is forgotten is that, for instance, this guy that up to the day before was just in charge of shift and keeping this place clean, now is also a decision maker. What do you think that the decision maker that is taking decision for the first time in his career will ask to his or her boss? What's the, the main reason why some people get more money than others? What's the main reason why you take difference? Not because you are old, unfortunately. Now they're 60, I would like that, but it's because you take decision. So you reward the, the fact that you take decision. So the person that now takes decision, you have to pay him or her more. So you have to say, okay, I give you a salary that is now you have an extra 500 euro per month because now you're also taking decision, not just taking care of the place. But then, in the same organization, there is a, 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 a guy that is called category manager that is in charge of making pricing, prices for all the, this that category. That this, in this case, is getting a lot of money. So these two things have to be changed because you could discover again when you start to making some kind of easy calculation that maybe that the best thing to do is to let those fresh food rotten on the, your shelves and give them for free. In, Ita in Italy there is the so-called Banco Alimentare, it's, it's a place where you give all your foods that you are not used to the poor people, and uh, rather than raising the, the, the salary of 1,000 store managers, that, that will be way more than what you have uh, gained from uh, having a, a few kilos of fresh food so sold. So we have to put, bring all these pieces together. Otherwise, the people will be, uh, once again, we being with the hype and not with a good business solution. And changing this over time, in every time, obviously, will also create another thing, easy to guess, if you're not just in, with your head thinking about how nice it is that you can change the price. What all the customer will learn, because the customer is not stupid. Go late. And so you will discover that you did as one, by the way that happened, you did the most great disaster in the history of retailing. So people will expect that so you are leading in, 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 a, in a never ending promotion. So this is business. So you cannot put together business and that without trying at the end of the day bring them together together on the same page. Because otherwise it's just so we have edge computing, we also need edge organization. Other fact, we still don't know how to control data and the side effects. I keep seeing a lot of side effects that are very, very in, in, incredible in business, some of them. This is one very well known, uh, if you don't know it, it's one of the nicest that we, we can share because some other, I have one example that by the way is secret. Uh, I hope we will not be known secret because we discovered that during the research with the company, we, 
this is a very good example. Again, uh, these are naive people saying, oh, now, now they have open data about the fact that we all sharing the same training device. We go running and we share all together, if it is a nice word, our tracks. Obviously, if you're in the middle of the desert and you, think, uh, you see people jogging, you, maybe you are thinking that it is not because they really like to suffer in, in, the, in, the, in the dry climate, because maybe they are for CIA or, or they are going to safe house. So this application discovered more than 100 safe house for the CIA. Because a lot of strange people are wearing this cap. They are fully trained operational, but they don't switch off their, their system. They use using their bracelet, telling they have been running 25 kilometers today. <laughs> and that's the map uh, you see. And you see, and then this guy, that was a Swedish guy, said, you know, these were made of open data, I analyzed them, I put them on the map, and discovered a lot of people are jogging in the middle of nowhere. And, then, and they finish always in the same place. They, that is a strange house in, in, in the desert, because be, behind that there was a safe house. Okay, and that's just one example. Again, we have not yet learned how to think that data is not something, it's a force of nature, we cannot really constrained on something what we like to read because it was sharing your, your path with other friends. So in Central Park is nice, not in the desert obviously. The other issue is that we are running out of space. That's a very interesting issue. So there's no technology that we have now that can take this, the same speed as we are going with data. We have only one hope for the time being, that is the DNA. Okay, that's the name of the company that is working uh, <coughs> about the research center. The Microsoft has a very interesting initiative, that catalog. I was lucky. Last week we had our, our research center. We also work with the MIT. They, they are our pushers of new technologies, and we evaluate them, each one makes. So we try to understand the, the business value, and they give us a list of emerging technologies. We have adjusted uh, our workshop last week, and uh, I was very lucky to, to, to interact with the CEO of the catalog and put a very convincing uh, argument of the DNA as it, because there is no other solution. Because the, the speed at which we produce data is not, in terms of kilos, as I said, even talking about kilos, we don't, we don't have enough place where to put them, and, and energy, by the way. Good thing about the DNA, in a nutshell, is that it's very resistant to time. You know, a, a CD or a DVD, after 30, 40 years, it's very likely you will not read what this was recorded. Magnetic drives, five years to, to be refreshed if there are critical data. After that, good luck. And uh, two weeks ago, they, they took a, a, from China a horse, 700,000 7, 7, 7, 700, years, and they'll be able to reconstruct the whole DNA. So this kind of good resisting is, is very, and by the way, it looks like it worked quite well. So, uh, well, there are a lot of technical consequences, but we can think about uh, they say the interface we already use is a very old one, but this is a very nice one, but it can lead you to, to exchange this kind of data. The other thing that is happening, and uh, we have to be ready to, to see the consequences, is what could be a kind of perfect storm. They say that we have big data, good machine learning, and quantum computing. And quantum computing, as you know, is really you can go online and get a lot of statistical tools. You can already go now online and, and play with quantum computing. Uh, it's difficult that you will have that installed in your house or your company, but you will have, you can access to quantum computing using online systems. And that's something that you can see, really see day after day that is coming. So it's no more again rocket science. Another issue that we ask, we ask <laughs> to a friend. Maybe it's time that we keep a bit more thing and we use a bit less hype. This, <laughs> believe it or not, are all real names. That means that we are going on the wrong, on the wrong path. Because when you create one that is the chief, chief robotics officer, the chief big data officer, obviously you cannot not have a chief big data officer. <laughs> and all this stuff, you know, the most of this is the, is the plastic demonstration that we are still very naive and uh, we have not understood that this is the word, that's the normal word. So it's like marketing. The people say, I want to make digital marketing. I always ask, there is another marketing that is not digital in 2018? <laughs> when you say pigeon, you want, what you want to use to, to, to tell people what you want? You want to avoid everything that is digital? So obviously, if you are a digital, you are a digital marketing, it's very nice as a label, but you are demonstrating that you are, you are really, 
not in, in living in a contemporary world. Okay, it's like there are people that are still brag because they know Excel. You know, I know Excel. I won't be hired by, by companies saying, "Look, I know Excel." But the same people don't brag saying, "I know, I drive a car." So we we, we know that driving a car is it's not that easy, but it's not something that makes a lot of difference. So here, the issue is trying to put together research, consulting, teaching, software industry, and working business as usual. I know I'm not, uh, not talking against your Akaton, but look at that as, as a phenomenon. Akaton is another demonstration that we are not yet get the point. We are exploiting people. That just came out. And that, I think, is very good. But the, there are a lot of students that are go to Akaton, they get a good idea, they, they get a, a prize, a winner, they smile. And they get just a picture. For the same problem, there are people that pay consultants. So either we have to put real rewards, or saying that's because we are really at the very beginning. But we have to be sure, because there's also an ethical problem. That's it, OK? Sociologists, in this case, are very nice. In, it doesn't look like that we are using a lot of people that work like hell, because it's nice. You have to work overnight with a lot of coffees. And after and three days. And a lot days, of beer in our case. A lot of beer in our case. case. They get or beer any for kind of, of things. <laughs> and then, when you've got a very good solution, the company brings it to the solution and say, OK, beer is worth for free, and then we make a lot of money. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, think it's, I think it's a great, great business. But Thank if you're consulting, <laughs> have you ever seen, I've, I've never seen the people in medical world saying, you know what, well, let's make an account about cancer research, OK? <laughs> and if we find a way to go with some cancer, we we'll take a picture, you go out, and we we'll make the medicine, the molecule. And, and beer. Well, and beer. <laughs> OK. So I think, and I'm trying to make a crusade on that, a bit less more Akaton, a bit more money. I know, I'm going, going, going from a business school, so I'm always linked to money. Let's give money to the people that are good. These are consulting. You have professors that are good, pay the professors. that make consulting, but not do something with just because with these Akaton things to be asked to finish in all the field that have a good a data is for me already a good sound area to work without Akaton. So saying that there are real problems with real people, with real research teams, a real consulting company. Okay? I would be academic in quantum computing, but not yet in this field. So what's the end? Finally, you will say. So at the, at the end of the day, I never found some lot of big data. Uh, we have just something that we can manage or not manage it with the technology we have. The real challenge is to have Big info and take better decisions. Remember that all the things to take better decisions at the end of the day, not use a statistical tool, but take better decisions. Natural, natural and social domains are quite different. It may be obvious, but I keep saying this is one hell of a difference. Data quality is still the precondition for any project. It's, I know that is like, uh, it's, it's, it's all, 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 all or school to tell it, but uh, it's still there, the problem. Context understanding and contextual data, especially social application, are very often the real bottleneck, what is really missing. And uh, so the, the dream of the people in Vodafone was not to improve not only their data, but to have something better about the market. If you have, I propose you one, take a checklist and try to, to think about all the components that are really making real value not just saying as a sentence uh, there is a lot of value in data and uh, if you go on, on the offer side uh, again this is not uh, a, there is no room for people that are improvised players so only the people that are really able to put end to end so statistical tool data cleaning system processing power and knowledge and it's not something that you can invent overnight so <laughs> the end of the end if you have, if you don't capitalize data set in natural science domain, you are making a big mistake. If you are, if you wanted to transform data set and value in social sciences, this is a big challenge. Thank you. I would like to escape using the excuse of the flight. Clients, and they said, why the quality is very low? Because many family they shield. There are uh, owners that shield the rest of the family because they put everything in their name. So we know everything but about the wrong person because the father or the, say, the everything is for me. 
So the car from my daughter, it was on my name. The house is on my name. Everything is his name, so you do, do, do don't get really, you have a kind of fake situation. So if it is, if it is one I really I know who is going to pay, that's a very good data. But to, get, to do that is a very low quality data. Another example, you know, that's again, we, we, we mentioned Amazon. Well, there is Amazon Prime. You know, Amazon Prime creates a, a, a very good, in the US, with $99, you get everything. You can imagine. I live part of my uh, year in the States. And uh, for Amazon, I'm a very, very curious client because I share that with my wife. <coughs> and obviously, my wife is uh, an avid reader of uh, thrillers on uh, Kindle, and I don't like them. And I like a lot of gizmos. Obviously, do you have, and what, guess what? They discovered a lot of people share that. So you have to change a saying. If I make it $99, and the people are sharing in the same family, I, will, I, will, I give a monetary reason to, to decrease the quality of data. So I, I get a lot of suggestions about three books that I will never read. I have to remember to tell my wife, you know, I received some, there is a new thriller, maybe you are interested. I, I, the only thing that I'm, I'm, I'm really scared to death that I don't do it because otherwise she will beat me. But apart from that, it, this is something that we're not going to create quality. That's another example. Instead, if you really want to know how much our family is ready to spend, that's, that's not bad. Because at the end of the day, it's more or less what, what, what we can spend. So you have to go really to the really detailed and pragmatic reason why you are using that data. And then you discover the quality is high or low. social. Yeah, I would say that it's very close. Because as I said, I'm very envious. Yeah, but, well, I love, well, uh, I, li I love, I like uh, things like architecture or, uh, you see that these are really serious areas. <laughs> or, 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 but again, that's architecture, you pay the two parts. How you can make a building that is standing, because that's physics, and then other thing, how you can build things that people like. And so putting the two things together are, is quite, are quite different because one is social, the other one is physics. Out of the two, physics is a bit more serious than management, obviously. And the more the more you study management, the more you learn that uh, this is not a science. So we are again always kind of uh, say guessing and trying to see what if we got it right. And when it, when something when we understand something is not made to last because this is washed away by, by a lot of phenomena that are globalization, uh, millennials, and everything is going to keep changing. Yeah. So, the, the, the speaker in the morning has uh, shown FinTech to be one of the most prominent areas. Yeah. And you're only talking about social media yes. and, and the physical world. It's yeah. kind of strange because you're coming from you know, yeah. business school, so I mean, can you comment something yeah, about sure. the FinTech? Uh, sorry, Fin. Finance, finance according to in which field the field? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I finance is completely it was, it was, so. It was, it was not, it was no, not no, me. I'm just like saying no, no, I'm saying like that. Yeah, we're right. I'm saying that. Yeah, just finance is in social part. It's not another science. I mean, the tools you can build are social. Are, 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 but the reason why today the dollar is going down or up is not science. Okay. Again, it's because there is Trump at the White House, and he made it. So it's all the people things together. It's not, there is no modeling of Trump for sure, but <laughs> there is no way to put all that together. It's something that makes sense. Okay. So otherwise, I would say if you really have neural, neural we work a lot with neural networks. So, so the first thing, if you don't want to lose time, what we do with neural networks instead of spending a lot of time to make research or browsing text as you do. What you want to really get rich and not just working on hard topic as you as you do. Make a neural network that predicts the price, the price of everything. Or just one thing. And then instead of losing time in Qatar trying to understand what happens with the people make those strange questions, you you'll be rich unless you really like that. Problem is that that network doesn't exist for the time being. You know? And again, if you look what is working, there are people working with high frequency trading that are not based on the fact that you understand what, but you, because maybe you hope that for the next 25 milliseconds that, that keeps going up and not down. 
you see? So I think that will not be a, a best kept secret. As soon as someone will discover what something that works in the field, we will know, we all know it. You know what's the state of the art here? That some predictive model tells you tend to a big, to a guy that then buys and sells, because that's the goes the problem about accountability here. I think that this share is going to be up for the next 20 minutes. That's the state of the heart here. Okay? And so if you think about FinTech, about putting this together and putting your money, I keep saying the best way to prove something is working, think about putting your money, not other people's money. Because other people pay money, we have a lot of ideas. It's with your money. And if I tell you that I developed this model, you will grab and you bring all your savings and I will, I will take care of them. You will start me asking a lot of good questions, I think. And not just because you have to put that on PowerPoint. Thank you. Also. Oh, yeah, please. Just, no, no, please. Just a good question. So at the end of the day, we have all those models yeah. that predict things for us. Yeah. But there is one person at the end of the day who takes the decision and says, this is the contact that I'm taking the decision. In. Yeah. In, my, in our field, and again, I can give you, that there has been, again, a, a very nice stream of research that was called now, it's not more fancy, but the, the concept is the same, and not there, it's called KBDSS, Knowledge Based Decision Support Systems. And that's the idea that you use the tools of, of, of managing knowledge, to be a neural network, an expert system, or data mining, to knowledge based decision support. But the key word is support system, not knowledge system, decision systems. And that's again, that's a very, very good way. Obviously, I'm not saying that it's, it's not working, but you need something that economically make the bridge between this and the, the, the decision. And that's also, again, a, a money matter. Because some human, even if they're very expensive, they're still the best effective cost-wise tool that you have to get it. You know? and, uh, and, uh, and, and that's something that you have to, if there is a nice, you know, there is this nice list of how much it costs to extract the Bitcoin in, in energy. And that's, that's make a lot of, because if you use the other people's energy, it doesn't cost you nothing. But if you use your own energy, you will see that break even is not that, that easy. Okay? And that's again because you have to put the money into the equation, not just the, the pleasure of managing data. Because, you know, we are in business school, so we have to put money into the equation sooner or later. Okay, thank you again. And good. good Thank you very much, everyone. So, so yeah, we'll see each other tomorrow. Yeah. See each other tomorrow yeah. for all the rest. Yeah. Have a yeah. very good yeah. weekend. And also, don't forget about the cocktail. We have a small improvised cocktail reception in the same hall that we see in the lunch. <laughs> <laughs>